into the relatively soothing profile of the dollar sign or escalate into converging staircase progressions which ascend asymptotically to infinity. Either way, I tend in such a mood to fill up the entire page with staircases and dollar signs, and by the time I've got all that belligerence out of my system to have practically no undecorated space left on the sheet. On the other hand, in an expansive mood, I'm just as likely to relish the idea of wide-open spaces of blank paper with only a few cryptic symbols, pointillistic dots and dashes perhaps, disturbing the piece, and often as not, in such cases, symbols which will be selected more for the enigmatic tenor of their apparent unrelatedness than for any single-minded pursuit of a motivic stereotype. Well, it seems to me that the two major works on tonight's program, the Sonata, Opus 31, Number 3, and the Eroica Variations, Opus 35, relate, or perhaps I should say do not relate, in pretty much that way. The Eroica Variations is certainly the figure 5 and letter S piece, and hence represents the restless, determined, not-to-be-deterred side of Beethoven, while the Sonata, Opus 31, Number 3, is the doodler's delight, as relaxed, spontaneous, and fluently inventive a work as he ever concocted. In fact, there are not many of his compositions which open up as unassertively as this one does. Its downbeat chord sets the cheerfully equivocal mood which prevails throughout the piece by foregoing those tonic, dominant, swearing-in ceremonies with which Beethoven customarily spends the first eight bars taking a loyalty oath to the basic triads of the home key. In this sonata, he starts off upon an inverted supertonic chord, and with the sort of episodic material that under normal circumstances he wouldn't have dared to touch until at least 30 seconds into the piece. The other movements of the sonata are not perhaps as enigmatic, but they each possess the same luxuriant fluency and just as conspicuously lack dogmatic fervor. The second movement is possibly even suavest, certainly least bumptious, scherzo. The third, a minuet and trio which anticipates Mendelssohn in the Calvinistic calm of its harmony. And the finale, an expansive amalgam of sonata allegro, and rondo form. Here's the sonata in E flat major, opus 31, number 3.
That was the Sonata in E-flat major, opus 31, number 3, by Beethoven. It's difficult to think of Beethoven, who so often set for himself and usually solved elaborate riddles in symphonic form, as a man who was sometimes content to trifle with music. But trifle is the most convenient rendering of the title bagatelle, and trifling is just what Beethoven occasionally did. In addition to the three sets of piano solos which bear that title, and from the last of which I'm going to play three excerpts in a few minutes, Beethoven composed other types of trifling music, such as the five military marches, the twelve orchestral contra dances, the twenty-six arrangements of Welsh folk songs, the thirty-seven arrangements of Scottish folk songs, the fifty-seven arrangements of Irish folk songs, and not to mention works like the Battle of Waterloo Symphony and the King Stephen Overture, which, despite their length, are simply trifles on the make for status. The bagatelles that I'm going to play now are from Opus 126, composed in 1823, and are consequently contemporary with the last of his string quartets. As in many of those late quartets, Beethoven achieves an almost conversational harmonic style here, which manages to keep its coffeehouse cool in a very Schubert-like way. But in contrast to the quartets, he doesn't exploit this simplicity in order to advance complex ideas in other operational areas, modally cross-related part writing, for instance, or eccentrically offbeat rhythmic devices. These pieces are pretty much what they seem to be, casual, amiable, rather unself-critical afterthoughts. The Three Bagatelles from Opus 126 by Beethoven.
take an attractive, meaningful, attention-getting theme, use it as the source for a set of variations, and you'll have a disaster on your hands. The law of inverse proportion is at work when it comes to the form of theme and variations, a law which many celebrated composers, from Mendelssohn to Max Reger, elected at their peril to ignore. They were tempted by involved and sophisticated themes with elaborate melodic roulades and expressive chromatic decor, and allowed these seductive tunes to make promises that in the course of the subsequent variations simply could not be kept. In his Eroica variations, Beethoven at first glance seems ready to join the ranks of the tempted. His basic motto is laconic enough. It consists of 16 bars of octaves in the lower register of the keyboard and of itself provides the sort of skeletal frame within which a significant structure could indeed grow. But after three preface-like variations, and while the piece is not yet two minutes old, Beethoven attaches to it a soprano theme, which, though it doesn't appear again unmodified until the coda, pretty well determines the melodic profile of each subsequent partition. Now, there are any number of devious chromatic ways in which the harmonic implications of either a bass or a soprano theme can be distended and restated. But to use both types of theme in tandem, make both significant, readily identifiable, harmonically suggestive, and the problems are compounded. Beethoven took on a double handicap. But in this case, as so often in his major works, he fell back upon themes of inordinate tenacity and almost primal urgency, used only the most rudimentary diatonic vocabulary for his chief motives, and for that reason the menace of the rather too agreeable soprano theme that he uses here is countered. It wraps itself around the basic chords of E-flat major, actually helping to buttress the Spartan diatonic pronouncements of the bass theme. And with this polarity established, Beethoven then concocts 15 transcendentally virtuosic variations which simply use the Prometheus theme and its bass accompaniment as a sort of launching pad from the secure tonal gantry of which the composer fires off a cannon, a fugue, a nocturne, a slow march, a fast march, and ten other assorted flights of fancy. Here are Beethoven's 15 variations in fugue, opus 35, the Eroica variations.
The Eroica Variations by Beethoven. From the Parliament Street studio of CBC Toronto, Glenn Gould has been heard in comment and recital in an all-Beethoven program. Production, James Kent, with the technical assistance of Murray Eggleston.